served, but to serve. And so he's teaching us that we should make ourselves of no reputation. And the way that we make ourselves of no reputation is for us to become imitators of Christ. So we do not serve as pastors, as apostles, as prophets, as teachers, or as evangelists to be served or to be elevated or to be put on pedestals. But we do this to serve the people of God because the Lord Jesus Christ himself was a servant unto the people of God. The Lord Jesus Christ was never there to be served. And, 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 and I venture to mention this, that the only time that the Lord Jesus Christ really displayed his splendor or his royalty was on Palm Sunday, where he said to the disciples, go into the city and in there you will find a donkey. Bring me that donkey. And if you are asked who wants, why are you taking that donkey? Say to them that it is needed by the son of man. And that is the only time that he allowed a God of honor to happen. That is the only time he really allowed people to put garments on the floor and put palm trees or palm leaves on the floor and for him to really just ride through as people were really just giving praise and honor to him. That is the only time that you really see this happening in the text. And so most of the time he was just a servant. He was just serving the people of God. And so the Apostle Paul writes here in this epistle and he says, finally, meaning when all is said and done, all is said and done. I have acknowledged your partnership with me. I have acknowledged how you take care of me. I have made promises to you. I have told you so many things. When all is said and done, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are factual or, or of a voracious account, whatsoever things are honest, meaning that things that are free of deceit and if spoken plainly whatsoever things are just meaning whatsoever things are morally right and fair whatsoever things are pure meaning things that are not adulterated with any other thing whatsoever things are lovely meaning whatsoever things are beautiful or attractive whatsoever things are of good report things that are dignified Things that are prestigious, things that are splendorous, things that are trustworthy. If there be any virtue, if there be any behavior showing a high moral standard, if there be any yardsticks of virtue or paragons of virtue, meditate on these things always. Meditate on these things always. Have a mind of Christ. Be an imitator of Christ Jesus. Focus everything on Christ Jesus. So that you can point to him and say that that is the yardstick of, of high moral behavior. And we know that Christ will never let us down. We know that Christ will never leave us in a lurch. We know that Christ will never disappoint us. And so it becomes important that we focus ourselves on Christ. When all is said and done, it is all about putting our focus on Christ. It is all about putting our attention on Christ and becoming imitators of Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless you as he blesses this word, as he blesses this message. Father, we honor you, we exalt you, we worship you. Lord God, I pray this afternoon that you help us, Lord God, through all situations, through all circumstances, through everything that we go through, Lord, help us to make you the focus of our lives, Lord. Help us to become imitators of you, Lord God. 
We want to become imitators of you, Lord God, so that your word can never be flawed, Father. I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that, Father, you help us, Lord God, to become yardsticks of virtue, Lord God, so that your word, Father God, will never, ever be faulted, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that we never bring disrepute to your word, Lord. So this afternoon, Lord God, we are here just asking for your help, Lord. Help us to remain focused on you. Help us to remain in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for everyone that is listening in. We are Good Life Radio. Our talk, your inspiration. We are bringing you healing, inspiration, empowerment, hope, motivation, and development. Good Life Radio, our talk, your inspiration. Just lead them in the direction that they were supposed to go. So if they were going north, they would follow the compass. If they were going east, they would follow the compass. If they were going west or south, or whichever direction it is they were going, they would follow that. And so when a magnet is put next to that compass, it would change the direction of the ship. And so normally when the enemy wanted to ambush um, the opponent or the one that they were going to battle against, they would then put a magnet next to that compass. And the they would put the magnet in the direction in which they wanted the opponent to go. And in that direction, it would lead the, the, the opponent into an ambush. And so when Christ is the center of our life and Christ is the focus in our lives, then there is nothing that the enemy can do to distract us. We know that in the book of First Chronicles, the, um, the devil tempts David to number Israel. And we see how angry God gets at this because um, you've never needed to count your army and you've won countless battles while I was the focus in everything that you do. But now you have allowed the devil to cause you to look away from me, to focus on how many men you have, how strong those men are, how weak those men are. The devil has made you aware of the battle you are going into. But before that, all you relied on was me. And you won every battle because your focus was on me. And now that you have taken your focus off from me, I will bring about a punishment to you. And so it becomes so important that whatever it is we go through, and we know that the text in the book of James teaches us to count it all joy, going through various trials, going through various challenges, whatever it is we go through, we remain joyful in Christ because our focus is on him. Our, he is the center of our lives. Everything we do is in him. And so today, I want to draw your attention to the text in the book of Philippians chapter number four. I'm going to read the text. And I will read a couple of other texts, you know, just to build a case and to uh, um, help bring this message home that I want to bring home. But the focus is on the text in Philippians chapter number four and verse number eight. The apostle writes and he says, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, if there be any praise, think on these things. Another version would say meditate on these things. Now, in order for us to really get a grasp of what the apostle is saying when he writes this, we need to understand the whole book and we need to look, 
you know, in the at the chapters that are before that. And I, and I want to draw your attention to chapter number two of Philippians and verse number five, where the apostle says, let this mind be in you, which also was in Christ Jesus. Now the question may arise, what mind is this? And verse number six said, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but made himself of no reputation. And took upon him the form of a servant and was made in the likeness of men and being found in fashion as a man he humbled himself and became obedient even unto death even the death of the cross amen he humbled himself and became obedient to death even unto the death of the cross and so this mind that needs to be in us we get to understand also when we just take a peek in the text in colossians chapter number one and verse number 26 and 27 um where the the the, the text says even the mystery which has been hidden from ages and from generations but now is made manifest to his saints to whom God would make known what is the riches of the glory of this mystery among the Gentiles, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory. So the text teaches us that this mystery that has been hidden for ages and from generations is now made, is now revealed to the Gentiles. Uh, uh, and this mystery is Christ in us the hope of glory and i was saying in church you know today that the foundation of this mystery or for this mystery to be revealed is belief we need to believe in christ and we know that the text in romans teaches us that faith cometh by hearing and that hearing the word of God. So whenever we hear something, a belief is stirred up in us. And once belief is stirred up in us, then hope is then hope is born within us. And when hope is born, then we have then we have faith in that. So we need to hear the text, we need to believe the text, and we need to understand and so that faith or hope can be built within us. So the reason why we should be imitators of Christ is because Christ is the focus of our lives. And so this teaches us that the mystery that has been hidden from us because of our belief in Christ now is no longer hidden. It is so we who believe in God can know that Christ is in us and that he is the hope of glory and that is the mystery that had been hidden for ages and generations. So the Apostle Paul writes to the churches in, to the church in Philippi, which has somehow partnered with him. And like I said, you need to read the whole book in order to get a full grasp of it. And so when the Apostle writes to the church in Philippi, there is a promise that he makes to them. And the promise is that my God will supply for all your needs according to his riches in glory. So what the apostle is doing in this instant, he is now becoming like Christ. He is imitating Christ. When we look at the synoptic gospels where Christ would make promises, especially in the book of John, he would make promises before he even consults the father. And so the apostle does not pray that God will supply for all their needs according to his riches in glory. But what the apostle does, he makes a promise in the in, as he imitates Christ. He makes this promise to them that God will supply for all their needs according to his riches in glory. And he is able to do this because he imitates who Christ is. And that's why it becomes important for us to be imitators of who Christ is. And so the church in Philippi, just to give a bit of understanding, 
is, is constantly uh, um, assisting the apostle. They are making continuous sacrifices for his upkeep, you know, financially to ensure that the apostle gets to eat, the apostle gets to travel, the apostle gets to preach the message without being worried. And the apostle also says to them, I know what it is to have much. I also know what it is to lack much. I know these things, but your partnership with me or your assistance throughout this time has really carried me through and it has helped me to be able to minister this message. And that's why he makes that promise to them. More than the acknowledgement, the apostle is urging the church in Philippi, in Philippi to have a mind like that of Jesus Christ. And so in Philippians chapter number two, as I've already mentioned, he tells them to have a mind like that of Christ. A mind that does not want to be served, but a mind that wants to serve. And so he's teaching us that we should make ourselves of no reputation. And the way that we make ourselves of no reputation is for us to become imitators of Christ. So we do not serve as pastors, as apostles, as prophets, as teachers, or as evangelists to be served or to be elevated or to be put on pedestals. But we do this to serve the people of God because the Lord Jesus Christ himself was a servant unto the people of God. The Lord Jesus Christ was never there to be served. And, 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 and I venture to mention this, that the only time that the Lord Jesus Christ really displayed his splendor or his royalty was on Palm Sunday, where he said to the disciples, go into the city and in there you will find a donkey. Bring me that donkey. And if you are asked who wants, why are you taking that donkey? Say to them that it is needed by the son of man. And that is the only time that he allowed a God of honor to happen. That is the only time he really allowed people to put garments on the floor and put palm trees or palm leaves on the floor and for him to really just ride through as people were really just giving praise and honor to him. That is the only time that you really see this happening in the text. And so most of the time he was just a servant. He was just serving the people of God. And so the Apostle Paul writes here in this epistle and he says, finally, meaning when all is said and done, all is said and done. I have acknowledged your partnership with me. I have acknowledged how you take care of me. I have made promises to you. I have told you so many things. When all is said and done, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are factual, or, or of a voracious account, whatsoever things are honest, meaning that things that are free of deceit, and if spoken plainly, whatsoever things are just, meaning whatsoever things are morally right and fair, whatsoever things are pure, meaning things that are not adulterated with any other thing, whatsoever things are lovely, Meaning whatsoever things are beautiful or attractive, whatsoever things are of good report, things that are dignified, things that are prestigious, things that are splendorous, things that are trustworthy, if there be any virtue, if there be any behavior showing a high moral standard, if there be any yardsticks of virtue or paragons of virtue, meditate on these things always. Meditate on these things always. Have a mind of Christ. Be an imitator of Christ Jesus. Focus everything on Christ Jesus so that you can point to him and say that that is the yardstick of, of high moral behavior 
And we know that Christ will never let us down. We know that Christ will never leave us in a lurch. We know that Christ will never disappoint us. And so it becomes important that we focus ourselves on Christ. When all is said and done, it is all about putting our focus on Christ. It is all about putting our attention on Christ and becoming imitators of Christ Jesus. May the Lord bless you as he blesses this word, as he blesses this message. Father, we honor you, we exalt you, we worship you. Lord God, I pray this afternoon that you help us, Lord God, through all situations, through all circumstances, through everything that we go through, Lord, help us to make you the focus of our lives, Lord. Help us to become imitators of you, Lord God. We want to become imitators of you, Lord God, so that your word can never be flawed, Father. I pray, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, that, Father, you help us, Lord God, to become yardsticks of virtue, Lord God, so that your word, Father God, will never, ever be faulted, Lord God. I pray, Lord, that we never bring disrepute to your word, Lord. So this afternoon, Lord God, we are here just asking for your help, Lord. Help us to remain focused on you. Help us to remain in you. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Thank you so much for everyone that is listening in. We are Good Life Radio, our talk, your inspiration. We are bringing you healing, inspiration, empowerment, hope, motivation, and development. Good Life Radio, our talk, your inspiration. <laughs>